Hi, welcome back to Astro Shed. It's been a while since I've done a video, but there's been a few changes to my setup, as you may be able to see here to my left. Uh, this video, I'm going to discuss why I decided to sell my Takahashi FSQ85 and buy an Esprit 100, which you probably think is a big change, and Takahashi's with the reputation they've got. It's a fantastic scope to sell, to buy, maybe what some people regard as a lesser scope. Well, there is a reason behind it, and that's what I want to explain now. So if you are somebody who's interested in owning a Takahashi FSQ85 for imaging, then you might be very interested to stick around and listen to this, because there's a few things you may need to know. So... A bit of history, four years ago I bought the Takahashi second hand, uh, I got it for a very 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 good price, it was hard to turn down, um, thought it would be a forever scope and I was using it with a Starlight Express SX VR M25C which is an APS-C size one shot colour sensor and it was superb, the colour correction is second to none and the uh, photos were absolutely brilliant stars were perfect corners to corners and i was really really happy and thought yeah this is a scope i'm going to keep for a long long time if not forever then i got a bit of a, an inkling to want to change my camera and buy a more up-to-date cmos camera so i bought the qhy268c one shot color camera again an aps-c size sensor so i thought it was just a straight swap no problems at all now the Takahashi natively is a quadruplet scope, four elements, it's a Petzval design, so it has a, a, a double lens at the front, a doublet, and another one further back, which is the second doublet, but that is the flattener, it's a built-in flattener, so there's no back focus to worry about, getting the correct distances with the flattener on that scope, because it's built in, it's a case of just reaching focus, and then you've got the best correction possible with the flat field. So I bought the QHY, put it on the back of the scope, took a few images, noticed the stars weren't quite right. So I messed around with a few things and still I wasn't happy with it at all. And basically, this is what I got on my first image of a galaxy, the star shapes. Absolutely awful, very, very bad astigmatism in the corners and in fact in 25% outer edge of the image and I thought well this is odd you know all I've done is change cameras same size sensors everything else is the same why why am I getting this astigmatism nothing's changed on the scope so I started to do a bit of research and look into it and it boils down to the center the pixel size in the camera the Takahashi FSQ85 was not designed to work with the modern day small pixel CMOS cameras because small pixels show every issue in the optical elements in an image. It will just point out every, every issue to you. You'll be able to see it won't hide anything. The big pixels on the Starlight Express camera, they were nearly 9 micron pixels. The QHY268 is 3.76 micron pixels big difference the nine micron pixels just hid all the issues any any astigmatism would be hidden in such the big pixels so the more i read about it, the more i realized that other people were having this problem um, and takahashi obviously eventually tried to sort it out in my opinion being that i don't think they have solved it but they brought out a, a second corrector basically another flattener to go on the back of this scope now this flattener is sold with the scopes now, it comes in the package. They don't advertise that, that this is actually needed and what they do say is it's only needed for full frame sensors. Wrong, it's needed for APS-C sensors too. And even then it only gave me a 50% increase in quality of stars. So you buy a Takahashi flat field scope you find there's another flattener in the box, so then it becomes a sextuplet scope. There's six lenses by the time you've put this flattener on the back. Then you've also got back focus issues. You've got to get a 56.2 millimeter back focus to this extra flattener. 
And believe me, you need 56.2. That point two is important. I tried everything from 55 to 57. And it didn't vary much. It was bad all the way through, even at 56.2 on my particular Takahashi. Now, I'm not saying that they're all the same. They're supposed to be handmade, handcrafted. There's a good chance that they may all be slightly different. Some are good, some aren't so good, and there's some in the middle. I've seen great pictures with these scopes, um, with, with the new corrector on the back. Personally, I don't think it's right that people should have to buy what is a, should be a flat field scope and then add another flat flattener to the back of it. This isn't what the scope is advertised as and a lot of people don't realise this and when they buy them they open them up and they think well why is there another flattener here? Well this is why. This was brought out about th three, three years ago I believe. They are now sold in the package with the scopes. I had to buy mine separately because I already owned the scope before they included them and it was about £220. Uh, so basically, I couldn't get good, good stars in my images at all. No matter what I tried, I tried all different back focuses, just could not get good stars. Put the SX Starlight Express camera back on the back of the scope, stars were fine. Corner to corner, no problems at all. So it was purely down to the small pixel size of these modern cameras. Now I've spoke to Takahashi via email in Europe, um, and I did some work with them trying different things. They said to me that I'm probably never going to get better. I'm always going to get about a 15 to 17 percent curvature in the corners, um, even with an APS-C sensor. Well, that isn't what they say when they advertise the scope. Um, and they also told me to try and focus two thirds the way out from the centre of the image to try and even out the curvature because it's the curvature in the, the bad curvature in the corners that causes the the problems with the stars astigmatism the optics are just not designed to work with the modern modern sensors i tried all these things and it was just no better i would say the extra flattener on the back gave me around a 50 percent increase in how it was but it was still not acceptable to me so this is the reason I sold the Takahashi and I bought an Esprit probably just for the time being. I'd like to get another forever scope, something maybe like an APM 120, something like that. But they're just, with the issues going on in the world, they're just impossible to get because the optics are made in Russia. You just can't get them at the moment and they're out of stock everywhere. I looked at buying a second hand one, thought I'd found one, that fell through. So for the time being, I bought this. Now, I bought this from Roller Valley Optics, and they've been absolutely brilliant. I had it Zygo tested, so it's been completely tested, all the optics to make sure everything's okay. And it came out with a straw ratio of uh, 0.97, which is pretty darn good. Uh, I haven't really had first light yet. Uh, I've just set it all up again. The rest of my rig is exactly the same. Uh, I've still got the Takahashi FS60, but that's put away because that was a bit overkill just to use as a guide scope. So I've moved to the Skywatcher uh, uh, Evo Guide 50ED as my guide scope. Everything else is the same, same man, but I've got a single, single setup now rather than the dual side by side. Um, and still got the mono camera and the QHY268M. I've still got the QHY268 one shot colour as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's why I've not been around for a while. I spent four months back end of last year, beginning of this year, trying to sort this problem out, thinking that there was a problem. Maybe my optics weren't collimated. It wasn't that. I tried everything. So, if there's anybody out there that is considering an FSQ85 for imaging, this video may be of use to you. Do some homework, look into it, especially on the Cloudy Nights forum. There is quite a few threads on there with people that have had problems with star shapes. And it turns out that it is down to the optics just not working well with the, the small pixel modern cameras. So it is worth thinking about. As far as colour correction, absolutely brilliant. You won't find a better scope with colour correction. But to me, that isn't the be all and end all. I want perfect stars or as perfect as I can get right into the corners. Um, 
you don't see them if you're just having your pictures on a computer screen small or on an iPad or a tablet of some sort you don't really notice the star problems it's only really when you zoom in I'm a bit of a pixel peeper a lot of people probably aren't too bothered about that the guy that I sold the scope to had a camera with a much smaller sensor he wasn't really that concerned as long as the main bulk of his image was okay so I sold it to him I was completely open and told him everything and the reasons I was getting rid of it but it certainly doesn't work it wouldn't work with a full frame sensor and I had all issues with an APS-C sensor so uh, this may be of interest to you if so think about giving me a like and a thumbs up and what I'll do now is I'll just give you a quick tour around of the new setup so as you can see it's the Esprit 100 with the Evo guide guide scope on the top I've still got the ASI 174M and the same imaging cameras and Pegasus focuser everything else is the same what I have added to my observatory is this which is basically an Amazon bought light pad for doing flats because obviously I've not got the deep sky dad automated flats panel on here and this is just fitted to an old wall mounted monitor stand and I can just pull it out put it in front of the scope to do flats very simple very easy and it works extremely well so uh, just a simple idea there if you if you're looking to do something like that so thank you for watching I hope this is of interest and I'll catch you again in the next one. Bye.